Hey there, my name's Luke. I'm a musician here in Nashville. And today I just want to share some tools that I use to create some smooth voice leading whenever I'm comping or arranging for the guitar. Um, so these, these chord voicings are called drop two voicings and they're going to be situated on the fifth string through the second string. Um, now there are other voice uh, sets or string sets that we could use, um, but for this video I'm just going to be uh, focusing on the fifth through the second string. Um, so for my example here, I'm going to be playing All the Things You Are, and I'm just going to be playing the, uh, the first section of that tune just to give you an idea of uh, the voice leading, and um, just pay attention to the top note of each chord and notice how sometimes it's shared by multiple chords or, or it also uh, moves down by step. So go ahead and take a listen to this. So as we can see, as I'm playing through that tune, that first note there is shared by the next chord. And then it moves down a half step for the next chord and continues to be shared by the, the following chord. Moves down by step, shared by the next chord. Oops, excuse me. down a half step. So the way that I'm able to achieve this sound is by uh, utilizing what's called drop two chord voicings. Um, so I'm going to show you all the drop two chord voicings for a C dominant seven and then I'll show you how you could just change one or two notes to create any other um, chord quality that you want. So I'm going to start off with my C7 on the 5th string here, where the root is on the 5th. Now most guitarists probably are, are, all, are already aware excuse me, of this voicing on the 5th string. Usually these were the first two uh, dominant 7 type voicings that I was aware of as I just started learning guitar where we had the, uh, the voicing on the 5th string and the voicing on the 6th string. Um, but now as we're focusing on the fifth string, notice the way that these notes are stacked up. So we have the, the root, the fifth, then we have the flat seven, and then we have the third, which creates a dominant chord because um, if you aren't already aware in, in music theory, in order to have a dominant seven chord, you need to have the root, the major third, the fifth, and then the flat seven. Now we're going to take uh, these same notes <clears throat> and we're going to move them up to a different position on the neck of the, uh, of the, the guitar. Um, so that, that's called an inversion where you're taking instead of the root on the, on the bass note, you're actually making it the third. So we're taking all these notes and we're uh, rearranging them higher up on the guitar. So we have the root on the fifth string. Sorry, not the root, pardon me. Uh, the third on the fifth string. Then we have the flat seven on the fourth. We have the root on the third string. And then we have the fifth on the second string. So we have third, flat seven, one, five. Next inversion is going to be uh, the fifth on the on the uh, bass strings. Here, here on the fifth string we have five. On the fourth string we have the root. Third string we have the third, and then on the second string we have the flat seven. And then the final inversion we have we have the flat seven on the fifth string third on the fourth string, then we have the fifth on the third string, and then the root on the second string. Okay, so why am I showing you all of this? All these inversions 
what's the point of knowing all of those inversions? Um, well, the point is, is that you can take any of these inversions and alter one note or two notes to create any other type of chord that you want. So we have a dominant seven chord, one, five, flat seven, three. And if we want to make it a minor seven, all you have to do is flatten the third. So we, if we know where our third is, we just flatten it, which is lowering it by a half step. So we have one, five, flat seven, three. Here's our third. Lower that by a half step, and you have a minor seven chord. So if you want to do that in the other inversion, first inversion is with the third in the bass. So if we just lower that, we have another minor seven chord, right? And we could go all the way up the neck, altering just the third to make a minor seven chord. If I want to make it major, I have my uh, again, going back to the dominant chord shape, one, five, flat seven, three. If I want to make it a major seven, I simply find the flat seven and I raise it up a half step to make it a major seven. And there's your major seven. And so apply this to all of the inversions on the neck and learn them in all the different keys. And so with, when you have that information all together, you're able to um, create some really nice voice leading. So let me show you the first chord of all the things you are is an F minor seven. So as you could tell, I just found that F minor seven from the dominant chord shape that we started off in the key of C, but we're moving it to F. There's the dominant. I wanted a minor seven, so I lower that third, make it a minor seven. The next chord that I need to find is a B flat minor seven, which is right there. And I'm using this as the inversion I'm using. I have the, uh, the fifth in the bass here, five, one, <coughs> flat three, and then the flat seven. And you can see that the minor third of that F minor seven is also the flat seven of that B flat minor seven chord. The next chord in the progression is an E dominant or E flat dominant seven, which is just that original shape that I taught you in C as the first shape, but we're moving it to E flat, so it's right here on the uh, on the sixth fret or sixth position. So, so far we have F minor seven, B flat minor seven, E flat dominant seven. And notice what the top note was doing. It was just staying and moving down by one step, really nice and smooth. Now the next chord is an A flat major seven chord which the closest voicing is right there. Um, and we notice that it shares that note in common. The next chord that we're going to be using is going to be a D flat major seven. And the closest voicing that I was using moves the top note down a, a whole step. And then uh, depending on the version that you're looking at, um, it's either going to be the next chord is either going to be a G7 or it'll be D minor 7 to G7 as a split bar. So I went for the D minor 7, that, that shape there. I found the closest G7 voicing, which shares that note. And then I resolve it to C major seven, which is just a half step away for that top note there. So as you can see, I've been able to, it's almost like a, I, I kind of look at it as like a puzzle where I find the first chord I want to start off with, which could kind of be an arbitrary thing, wherever you want to choose, whatever position you want to start off, it could be this F minor seven, or it could be any other F minor seven within those um, 
variations that I showed you earlier. And then once you choose a spot to start on the neck, you just kind of work your way around by figuring out what is the closest uh, voicing that's available to me that'll, that'll sound nice and smooth. Um, so in order to kind of summarize this lesson today, learn all of your um, drop two voicings, strings five through two. I just started in C. And as you get the hang of feeling about where those are, noticing where those are, starting on the root, the third, the, the fifth, and the flat seven, as you're cycling through those, kind of also notice exactly what are the qualities or what are the, uh, the notes that you're playing. So noticing that's for the root position, you're playing one, five, flat seven, three. For the next posi position, you're playing third, <coughs> flat seven, root, fifth, so on and so on. And once you get a hang of noticing that those patterns, um, then you can alter one note or two notes depending on what chord quality you're going for. If you want it to be a minor seven or a major seven, half diminish, full diminish, whatever you want. Um, and as you get used to that, apply them to all the different keys as well. So rather than just starting on C, maybe you could start on B. Whoops, right? You could start on B. Get used to all those variations. And as you get the hang of it, as you get those under your fingers, you'll be able to realize quicker where the closest chord options are as you're working out your comping or your arrangement. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. Um, I noticed for myself as I picked up on this tool, it's really improved my playing and really kind of adds more of a mature sound to uh, the comping or the arranging that I do. And it's really just, a, a, I find it really fun and satisfying to work through uh, the comping, um, figuring out where the closest chord options are to create a really nice and smooth voice leading. Um, so hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions or if any of this is confusing, feel free to comment below and hopefully I can answer whatever question you might have. Um, or you could also send me an email. My email is going to be uh, attached to my website, which is down in the description. And I actually do online lessons. So if you're interested in an online lesson, like we could go over this or whatever other topic you might be interested in. Um, again, my name is Luke Sunderland. I appreciate you watching. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Um, and if you, if you can, go ahead and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. I'll be releasing more and more content once a week. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.